All right. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to look at uh, parametric rotation of panels. Um, so for this, we're going to actually use an input curve, and that curve could be anything um, you want. It could be polyline, it could be a NURBS curve as well. Um, so uh, I'm going to start by um, actually using a straight line so that we can make uh, things a bit more simpler. So I'm just going to um, model a line, let's say this is um, 60 units. And I'm going to input this into Grasshopper. Um, now that there's a line there, we're going to divide it into segments. So we could use simply divide length function, or you can also divide it into points. Um, I prefer divide length. And let's specify some value, like 2. And um, since the full length is um, kind of a multiplication of two, uh, we actually get a point at the end, but in case you're missing one here, that will, um, that might be a half of a, a half of a panel actually. So you have to be, um, I guess you, you don't need to use divide length, but you could use some other division as well. So um, I'm going to turn these into line segments. Uh, to do that, we, um, we're going to work with these points actually. Um, so let's um, use shift, list uh, what shift list does is it basically um, if you have a point list let's say let's look at the the row of data that we have so we have a list of points here you can see their indices so i'm actually going to make it 0.5 this was too much all right so you can see the indices start with zero and go all the way up to 30. Um, so what I want to do is shift the list in a way that we create two lists. One goes from 0 to 29, and the other one goes from 1 to 30. So let's see how shift list works. Um, so when you um, actually shift it by an index, this basically um, moves the data along. So um, for instance, when I use 5, um, it basically pushes the first five items to the end of the list. So our point list now starts here in this index that used to be five. So you can see how that these are parametrically connected. Um, and we have the wrapping on. So if you want to actually make it false, now the shifted data is not appended at the end of the list. So you can see that we're actually shifting and losing these points. Now the remaining points um, are less in number, so they end up at 24. So we have shifted six points. Now this can also happen in negative fashion. So if you do negative five to five, let's say, you can also shift the data in the reverse direction. So um, this would actually get rid of the data at the end of the list. You can see we are actually calling the data. And if you turn it to be true, the wrapping the shifted items um, basically um, become the first uh, starting point of the list, right? So we are basically shifting it in the positive or negative direction. So um, what do we need? We actually need um, basically two lists, uh, one that starts with a positive index uh, with no wrapping. So we start from the second uh, point and we need another one that has a negative index. Uh, so we start from here in the beginning and end up here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to connect these two using line segments. So here they are. So these are my line segments now. I'm going to turn this off so that we can look at the lines. Now, um, this actually looks kind of um, um, trivial, but um, there, there should be uh, there could be a simpler way of dividing a line segment into lines but the reason why i'm doing it this way is because i want to extrude these into panels so if you do extrude for instance if you want to see what these look like when i extrude it in the z direction and let's give it a height of five so these become panels now so you can see um, how these line segments became uh, individual surfaces so um the reason why I did it this way is because I want to rotate um, 
these panels. So how do we rotate them? We can actually rotate them at any location. So if you do point on curve here, for instance, you can actually grab the midpoints of these panels. Now they can actually rotate along these pivots. Uh, so we can do rotate an object in a plane or um, you can simply do a 3D rotation, but this would be the easiest. Now the geometries that I want to rotate could be these panels, extrusions or the lines, but I'm going to use lines. And the center of rotation would be these midpoints and the angle of rotation could be anything you want. So let's say you want to rotate them 90 degrees and you want to right click here and specify it to be degrees. So these are the rotated lines now. All of them are rotated um, 90 degrees. So now we have uh, parametrically rotating uh, surface panels. Now what I want to do is um, actually do a few things. I want to create um, an attractor here, or you can also do, uh, let's say, map the rotation using some other function, or you can use an attractor. Let's look at how the attractor would work. Imagine we have a point here. And what I want to do is if a panel is close to the point, I want to rotate them 90 degrees. So how do we achieve that? Um, we can actually do it this way. So these rotation points, the centers, we can calculate their distances to the attractor point. So you can look for these distances. And there is a great function called remap, which basically gets the values and in, you need the interval of these so that you can map it in onto some other interval. Now, um, the interval we don't know because we have a bunch of distances. So bounce actually gives us the minimum and maximum values um, for the distances. So if you look here, for instance, 9 to 42 is our interval. So that will be our source domain. Now our target domain could be 0 to 1. So it could work like a percentage and I can basically map the distance to um, a percentage now. And if you multiply this with the 90 degrees, let's say, what will happen is um, basically the, the largest value would rotate 90 degrees and everything else would rotate less. So um, if we do it this way, this would actually change like this. So wherever your attractor is, that um, those panels would actually uh, stay close to 90 degree rotation, uh, sorry, zero degree rotation, so they won't rotate. Um, and this would actually control the total amount of rotation. Let's keep it at 90. Now, if you want to reverse this, you can simply uh, switch the target domain or you, you can subtract these values from one, right? So if you subtract, for instance, all these values from one, what would happen is you would be reversing the interval. So now whatever uh, panel is closest, they would open and the uh, ones that are far away, they will be closed. All right. So that's basically um, how that would work with an tractor. Um, now let's try to do this um, maybe on another type of um, curve or polyline. So I'm going to disable this for now and let's actually make it an interesting profile. I'm not sure if this would work, but because we have divide length, let's give it a shot. I guess we would have issues here. Maybe we should uh, round this first. Let's try to do that actually. So I'm going to load this up now. And now I'm going to do a fillet. So this would round up sharp corners of the polyline. So you can see now we have uh, rounded up the corners. You can actually control it parametrically. Now I'm going to connect it to divide length function. And we have basically um, the divisions working. Here you can see it's kind of coming in short because um, the, the lengths are not, uh, like the length of the total curve is not a, a multiplication of two but still you kind of get um, some behavior based on uh, the panel's distances to this point. Of course, this could be uh, a bit more interesting if it's, for instance, here. Now all of these are turning 90 degrees. 
these are basically kind of becoming trivial because they're kind of far away. Um, but this would this could give you kind of a nice um, application of control over how you want um, the panel rotation to be. Um, we can actually add one more thing to this, which is not to use a point, but kind of have um, a surface movement, let's say, or an undulation using graph mapper. So let's look at that. I'm going to attach a graph mapper. And we have to get the number of line segments we have. So we have 78. So I'm going to do list length here so that we get the total number of panels we have. And then I'm going to connect this to a range. And um, when you connect 78 to range, this will give you 79 values. So you have to right click here and write a simple expression of um, x minus 1 which will basically give us the same number of um, panels, which is 78. Now here I'm going to use something interesting called sine summation. Um, and this, what this would do is that will create basically um, a mixture of two sine waves and that will give us kind of parametric values that are continuous. And we can use this um, as a coefficient for our rotation. Now, all of this mapping is not necessary. You can also subtract these values from one as I did it here. So if there's a greater value, that will basically become um, less rotated. It's totally up to you, but you can also use these directly. So if I connect it here, you can see now these, um, the sine wave is actually controlling the amount of rotation. So if I play around with this, that's actually controlling the individual rotation of each panels. We could also make it really, really jagged and also increase the number of panels. So if I reduce the length here, we will have more panels. Let me actually disable these so that we can see. And the panels are kind of moving, but they're only moving in the positive direction, right? So we, we might want to have also negative rotation. Um, for instance, imagine uh, this to be 90, but maybe we also need negative values. So what you can do is double click on the graph mapper and in the Y direction, we want to go from negative one to positive one. And that would also create um, negative rotations so that you will see some sort of the mapping of this sine wave onto the surface a bit better. You can see we have like more jagged transitions. And it also looks here, basically. So there you have it. Um, we were able, able to basically divide a surface into vertical panels and use the sine summation function to create um, some basic articulations for panel rotation. So I hope you liked this um, tutorial. Um, let's uh, see you in another one. Uh, thanks for watching.